Okay guys, so Logan Paul has released a video in which he's discussing religion. I'm not overly religious, I do believe in a creator. I think he's made some very valid arguments or points or questions which Muhammad Hijab has answered, Imran Hussein has answered, Subur Ahmed has also answered. I'll put their links in the description and I'm going to try to come at it from a different angle. Reason being because I think these sorts of questions get brought up a lot by the uh, modern day teenagers and it's kind of put forward a lot by the likes of the Russell Brands, the Jim Carreys, the Deepak Chopras. So I definitely think it's something that's worth discussing. Let's roll it mate. That's a gen, yeah. <laughs> Some sort of unimaginable thing that made us in this universe and everything around us. Okay, so we begin with Logan's definition of God, something which is unimaginable. That's a brilliant definition so far of God. I'm not sure I can fully wrap my head around so many people telling me different things about their God. Because he goes on to say, because there's so many people pulling him in different directions and giving different definitions of God, it becomes confusing. All right, cool. Let's just stick with your definition of God. Someone who is unimaginable. If you just stick with this definition of God, you know what? You'll actually be able to eliminate a lot of the other confusing religions that you speak of. That means you can't have a God man, you can't have a God animal, you can't have somebody that's like a human being, yeah, that wrestles and that gets tired, you know, the Old Testament depiction of God. So like that, you are then left with Islam, the only massly followed monotheistic faith. Religion, faith, whatever you want to call it, has has led to the deaths of too many people, has led to the, the trauma of too many children. Then he talks about religion and violence, okay? This is a very popular kind of subject matter that gets brought up, let's deal with it, yeah? So you've got people that have looked into this question, you have someone called Robert Pape who's written an entire book and compiled statistics from 1980s looking at suicide attacks that have happened and of course you've got the likes of Karen Armstrong who's also written a book and some studies on this as well and they come to the conclusion that it's mostly political and in particular it's to do with removing the occupying forces that have come into your country. And if that's not all, you've got leaders like Obama, Trump, Hillary Clinton that have also agreed this particular point as well. ISIL is a direct outgrowth of Al Qaeda in Iraq that grew out of our invasion, that grew out of our invasion, which is an example of unintended consequence. We have totally destabilized the Middle East. It's a disaster. We had this brilliant idea that we were going to come to Pakistan and create a force of Mujahideen, equip them with Stinger missiles and everything else to go after the Soviets inside Afghanistan. Number two, to claim that violence is only associated and affiliated with religions, that's not very fair, yeah, because that means you're not taking into account Stalin, yeah, Mao, Pol Pot, who were very atheistic in their way of thinking. And you know, to scapegoat violence only on religion, that's not fair. And of course, number three, you judge the religion on its ideal and merits, not by the people that are following it. Because people by their nature are, you know, they fight about everything. Yeah, there's wars going on about everything. You know what I'm saying? I mean, look nowadays what's going on. It's not to do with the religion, you know, the issue between China and America and Russia and America and it's mostly economy based. What are you going to say there? I think uh, the universally accepted definition of good is like, you know, right and wrong. You know when something's right and something's Morality. wrong. Morality. Then Logan talks about something in Islam that we call fitra or you guys call core, uh, core morality or the innate disposition. But then the question is mate, how do you separate between nature and nurture, yeah? Which means what is actually your innate disposition, your nature, and what you picked up from society and culture, your nurture. Society! Society, man! Society! 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 society. How do you distinguish between the two? I mean, we know loads of things that have prevailed in our cultures. If you look in the Middle Ages in Europe, where a sign of beauty was plucking out your eyelashes. I mean, I'm cringing just thinking about it, yeah? Or in the 18th century in Japan where a sign of beauty was blackening your teeth. If you are alive at that time, 
you probably would have been doing those exact same things. Having sex before marriage isn't, in my opinion, wrong. But according to religion, it is. And then you go further by saying you personally don't think that sex before marriage is wrong. But I mean, who cares what you and I think? That surely is not the right criteria to live one's life by making yourself God, yeah? Or being a slave to your desires and your intellect, which clearly by nature is flawed, yeah? I mean, let me just take something that you did a couple of years ago, yeah? You went to a suicide forest in Japan and you started doing a vlog there and naturally that affected your career in a really bad and negative way. But I'm sure at that time, I mean, you had people around you. I'm sure at that time you didn't think you were doing anything wrong. So that's why to, for us to rely on our subjective, uh, subjective understanding of morals is not wise. We need an objective understanding. Somebody that's created us, that knows us better than we know ourselves. I, this is where I get confused. Like, like who's right and who's wrong? Are, are, are Muslims wrong because they're Muslim? Are Christians wrong because they're Christian? That leads me on to the next point. How do you know? How do you know and how can you decipher which religion is the right religion? Okay, number one, you said yourself mate, intuition. Yeah, what does your heart say? What does your understanding say? Number two, logic. Number three, scripture. You're going to have to look into the different scriptures and of course, ask. <laughs> yeah, ask God. God, if you're there mate, guide me. Yeah, please, I want guidance. If you're asking for guidance, why on earth would God not guide you? And has led to so many disagreements and confusion and death. And then he goes on to talk about disagreements. I mean, just because there's disagreements in something, it doesn't mean that you reject it totally. There's disagreements that I'm sure that happen in your family. <laughs> what does that mean? You're going to pack your bags and go on the next train to Bangkok. I don't think there is a train that goes from America to back. I mean, there's disagreements in philosophy. There's disagreements in psychology. There's disagreements in physics. There's disagreements in evolution in Big Bang. I mean, you name it. There's disagreements in everything. That doesn't mean that you just reject it just because there's disagreements in it. Then he says millions of people die. Okay, well, millions of people die because of medicine as well. Yeah side effects that occur or wrongly prescribed medicine, millions die. Millions die because of food. Millions die because of car accidents, plane accidents. What does that mean? That you're going to ban all these things, that you're, you're going to boycott all these things. You know what I'm saying? All right guys, I'm going to leave it there. I tried to keep this video as short and as succinct as possible. I'm going to link the videos of the other brothers in the description. I'm going to leave you with one final advice or request, which is to read the Quran yourself. Read the Quran and ask God and you know what if you're sincere you will be guided. Let's leave it there until next time. They're Muslim? What? Assalamu alaikum.